Hey guys, welcome back. If you've been following me on Instagram or following my YouTube channel, you know that I'm making a ginormous Drogon doll. So here is uh, how I have sculpted the piece and I have molded and cast it in resin and this video will be going through how I painted his face. So stay tuned. So here's one of the pieces that I have cast in resin. Uh, and I'll be painting uh, a piece up that looks very similar to this, but it's got glass eyes. And I'm hopefully going to do a moulding and casting video on it. It's just very time consuming and I haven't quite perfected it yet, so I want to get that over and done with first. And here's also the other sculpt of the closed mouth version. Uh, I haven't painted one up yet, but I think I'm going to be using that one for Rhaegal uh, in the future. Alright, so here are the colours that I'm going to be using. Um, they're all chrome acryl acrylic paints. So it's yellow oxide, gold oxide, red oxide, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, warm red, cool red, skin tone base, and ash pink from Doviant Matisse. So I'm going to start off by doing the the light undertones first and then moving towards the darker tones so um, just a little tip if you're wanting to do different layers of paint then you start with the lighter ones and move to the darker ones because light colors are much easier to cover with a darker color than the other way around so um, the skin tone base for Drogon um, is a sort of an orange color uh, so I've gone through so many pictures of him and it was really difficult because when you uh, look at the show and all the different scenes with Drogon in it, uh, the colouring's always different so I had to pick an in-between colourings that works um, because it's just different every time I look at something. So I wanted to go for a more orange tone around the eyes so um, I'm using the skin tone base uh, to go around the eyes. So I haven't watered down this particular paint that's going around the eyes because I wanted to stand out a little bit more um, but when I go over the skin itself I do water it down quite a lot just so it runs in between the scale area and brings out the texture a little more. So this was originally cast in three different parts, uh, the lower jaw, the top jaw and the tongue and I have connected them together using a um, sort of a clip joint system but I've um, epoxied them together so uh, the lower and the top jaw don't come apart but you can remove the tongue um, so I had an idea in the future of possibly doing a resin flame piece or something that fits into that same hole as the tongue fits in so maybe maybe not I'm not sure just yet Okay, so I'm applying the watered down skin tone base over the scale area of Drogon um, and just wiping off any excess paint that I didn't really want there. Now I'm just going to go in and um, highlight the nose area with a pink paint that I mixed up myself because that ash pink was a bit too light for my liking so I added a little bit of red to it just to give it a bit more of a pink look. So I tried out the pink colour on the gums just to see how it looked but yeah, I found it a bit too light for my liking so I ended up stopping here and just uh, mixing up my own uh, custom colour for the um, gums. So I went back to uh, just filling in the nose holes with um, a bit of um, black paint but uh, just to darken the area a little bit because it just looks a bit weird. All 
Alright, so here's my custom red paint that I mixed up. Uh, it's just a little bit of red with um, a lot of pink. <laughs> Uh, just give it a pinky undertone and I'll just go around and um, paint the inside of the gum area and under the mouth and below the mouth and I always think red paint has a smell like red has a smell and it has a particular smell and uh, <laughs> I was saying that the other day and um, I just thought it was funny that red has a smell So I put a lot of coats of paint on Drogon um, just to achieve uh, the various undertones and colours that he has. He's actually uh, a very colourful dragon, uh, even though he is a black dragon, it's just all these secret undertones and stuff that really brings the skin out a bit more. So for the mouth area, um, I put down this uh, pinky red base tone and I went over it with um, a couple of different browns just to give it a bit of depth and texture. that first uh, red layer looks like. Moving on to the tongue and I'm painting it with that same pinky uh, red paint um, and I uh, will go over it again with some different shades of brown to give it some texture and some spots on the tongue and stuff. color for the teeth. It's just a bit of an off-white or eggshell color um, because I didn't want them just a stark white because dragon's teeth aren't stark white, they're a little bit gross. So I mixed up an off-white color and I'm just going to go in and go over all of those teeth with that color and then I'll go over and blend it in a little bit more with some browns just to make it a bit grungier. see what it looks like on the tip of that horn and so I'm pretty happy with the way that color turned out as a base color uh, and then I'll be adding a lot of different tones to it uh, throughout the process because I wanted it to um, blend to a lighter color from the tip and a darker color um, on the base. So just going in and painting the horns first with that custom color uh, and I'll go over again and paint some more uh, tones to it.
is that uh, horns all painted up. I'm going to let it dry and come back to it a bit later with um, some other colours. Alright, just going over the rest of the scale area with that um, orangey colour just to uh, get that um, tone underneath all of the scales. And it is watered down just so it runs into those scale areas. on Drogon's tongue. I uh, found a really good close-up of his tongue and it has a lot of brown marks on it so just going in with a burnt umber just to um, give it some uh, effect and it is watered down a little bit so it uh, sort of melts into um, the tongue area. Alright so opposed to what I said at the beginning when starting with a lighter colour, uh, for the horns I actually did the opposite way around and started off with a darker colour and added some light to the end of it. Um, I kind of changed my mind that I wanted a bit lighter at the ends. Uh, so I'm just going over it again with um, that yellow oxide colour and um, just painting the tips of the horns uh, to give it a sort of a gradient look. So same deal as the tongue and I'm just going in with um, some of that brown uh, colour watered down just so it runs into any crevices and makes it a bit more uh, detailed uh, just in the mouth area and leaves some sort of spots on the lower you know, gum line and everything. Right, going in with another custom colour and it's slightly darker than what I painted uh, my teeth with so um, it always ends up drying a bit darker uh, and a bit more depth to the paint when it's dry so um, just adding a sort of a creamy yellow colour to the tips, very tips of them uh, and then I'll go over again with some darker colours. just to make it a bit darker and um, blend it in a little bit towards the top because I didn't really want them that light uh, I wanted them a sort of darker tone um, rather than the lighter tone that I've seen so just deciding to go ahead and paint all of the little horn bits uh, a brown tone to start off with rather than um, any orange tones so just going over everything with that brown paint again dry brush technique of that same raw umber tone. Um, don't want to put too much of this brown down because I still want that orange to peek through uh, when I'm painting it further. So I had a lot of comments on my Instagram that it actually looked like Viserion rather than uh, Drogon but it's not finished!
in with some of that black paint and I'm not really loading up my brush too much. I uh, want it to be subtle black, so not too overwhelming for the horns, uh, just so uh, the skin blends into the horns, just like uh, some of the pictures I've seen. So I'm just starting off uh, with a dry brush, uh, uh, going over the scales and stuff with uh, the black because I didn't want to go all out and just load up my brush again and paint too much black on and be unhappy with it. So I just went over very lightly to see how it looks to begin with and then I'll take it from there. So I had this idea of um, using little uh, thick paint dots to see uh, if it would add a little bit of texture around the eyes. Um, it did, uh, but it didn't get the coverage that I wanted, but I'm still glad I did it because uh, I gave it little dots texture so it looks like little miniature scales rather than sculpting it in. Um, so yeah, I'm just scooping up a tiny bit of paint and just dabbing it on and it leaves like a little blob and sometimes it's a little raised blob so it looks like a little spine. So I ended up doing quite a lot of um, layers of that black paint because uh, I wasn't really happy with the way it was turning out so uh, I put quite a lot of layer on it uh, and a lot of layers of orange and browns just to get that tone right. Uh, so you can see here that I'm going in with my orange colour and just highlighting little areas of the scales on the face and stuff just so it looks a little different and every, every little scale looks different. Um, I didn't want it to look all the same because, you know, skin's not all the same. So I added tiny little details everywhere you could see and tiny little different shades um, so it didn't look all the same. Probably unnecessary, but to me I just needed to do it. <laughs> So I wanted to show you just a small clip of real time of just how long it actually takes. It took me hours and hours to paint this, uh, let alone sculpting it and moulding it and casting it and everything else. So the painting alone took me hours. Right, so once I was happy with the way the paint looked, I waited for it to dry and then I went over with my Liquitex Matte Medium, uh, I think it's a matte varnish actually, uh, to just lock in that paintwork and so make sure nothing gets scraped or damaged or anything. And then moving on to glossing and I'm using a Liquitex gloss medium to uh, highlight any wet areas, for example the teeth and uh, little spit bits and stuff. And then I decided I didn't really want the inside of Drogon's eyes to be orange, I wanted them to be black so I just went in and uh, fixed up that bit there. And I'm happy I did that because it sort of brought out the eyes a little bit more and it didn't uh, get lost in that orange. Okay, so I'm just going to be adding little bits of spit and if you want me to do a separate video on the spit, uh, let me know down below and I can do a dedicated video for it. Um, but yeah, it just involves a glue gun and uh, a lot of burnt fingers. <laughs> But uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the little spit things turned out and, and they're pretty durable because they're hot glue.
body and wings and everything else that needs to be done. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Alright, that's it from me today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any requests, leave it in the comments down below. And you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Matt. And I will see you next time. Duh.